Business Now, Stevens here, and the head of Ursula von der Leyen's State of the European speech later. He's been looking at the state of the uh, European economy for us. Yeah, that's right. Interesting. A big change since this time last year. Perhaps we might hear a little bit less about the economy, and that's because things are looking fairly positive uh, for the economies across Europe now. The 27 member states expected to grow by 4.8% this year, according to the latest figures. In its July forecast, the European Commission said it expected economic activity to be back to pre-pandemic levels by the end of this year. Despite some worrying trends in inflation, the picture is generally quite positive. As for the EU's role in all of this, its flagship economic policy has been the recovery fund called Next Generation EU. It's a €750 billion Euro package made up of €390 billion of, lo of grants, €360 billion of loans. The money is being raised via a joint borrowing mechanism, which is a big step for the EU course approved last year as well for it to issue its own bonds for a project of this kind. The fund is supposed to help EU countries to recover from the pandemic but to place a particular focus on investing in climate friendly policies and in digitalisation. So what's happened then since that plan was uh, agreed last year, Stephen? So national governments had to apply for money from the fund. We now know the biggest amounts are going to go to Italy and to Spain. So far, 18 countries have had their plans approved by Brussels. The money has started to arrive as well. Around €49 billion Euros has already been paid out to national capitals. But the green light for their spending plans by both Poland and Hungary have been uh, withheld, despite them passing the deadline that they're supposed to be approved within. Uh, in Hungary's case, it's officially because of concerns over anti-corruption measures in the country, whereas the Justice Commissioner says that in Poland's case, uh, Warsaw will need to prove it's no longer defying a European Court of Justice ruling over judicial independence. So lots of politics at play now uh, in this recovery fund. Uh, perhaps that might be something we'll hear us and make allusion to. Let's turn to Spain for this next story. Uh, the government is promising action there on rising energy prices. Another consequence of that rising inflation I was just talking about. Spanish consumers have seen their bills skyrocket in recent months, up 35% over the past year. This is because of the way the Spanish energy market works. Households there are seeing the effects of rising wholesale prices faster than consumers in other parts of Europe have seen. But it is something that's coming down the line for many of us across Europe. Spain's Prime Minister Pedro Sánchez has slashed consumer taxes on electricity in response to this. That's until the end of this year. The government says it also plans to claw back almost €3 billion Euros in what it describes as excess profits of energy companies. What we're going to do is to bring those benefits extraordinary that the energy companies have. How much is it going to be? It can be permitted. And we're going to redirect it to the consumers. For what? To get ante el alza que va a venir en los próximos meses del precio del gas, lo que vamos a hacer es topar eh, el recibo del gas natural y también lo que vamos del gas, mejor dicho, y también lo que vamos a hacer es con esta medida reducir eh, el recibo de la luz. Now to the next uh, latest, rather, uh, iPhones unveiled by Apple. It's the biggest earner for one of the world's most valuable companies. Apple announcing four new. 5G-enabled phones at an All event at its headquarters on Tuesday. The iPhone 13 has new super-fast microchips, it's improvements to the camera as well, and longer battery life too. The goal here for Apple is to encourage more people to upgrade their phones at a time when we're generally keeping our devices for longer. Let's get the view of technology analyst Bob O'Donnell. To support our latest pro technology, so you can change. You know, I thought the iPhone 13 was pretty much what everybody expected it to be. It was an incremental improvement in uh, performance from the A15 chip. It was an incremental improvement in camera camera capabilities and an incremental improvement in battery life. All the basic things that you check marks that you're looking for, but it wasn't dramatic. You know, I've used the analogy that. Uh, Apple is kind of like a pop band that puts out albums every year, and some albums are huge hits, and other albums are just kind of okay, but their fans love them all. It's just that when they have the huge hits, more people buy in. I like that analogy for uh, Apple and a pop band. Anyway, <laughs> let's take a look at what's happening on the markets for you next. A mixed picture today on Asian share markets. The general trend, though, is down. There's still concerns out there about the Chinese economy. New data today showing a slowdown in growth and manufacturing and retail in August. Shares in the troubled property developer Evergrande tumbling again today in Hong Kong. They're down by nearly 5% there. That's dragging down the Hang Seng. Now, Malaysia's tourism industry is uh, trying, anyway, to get back on its feet, isn't it? After 18 months of travel restrictions, Malaysia's now opening up a travel bubble 
to the Langkawi Islands. The islands will be reopened to locals first on a trial basis. It's after a similar scheme was tried in Phuket in Thailand. Ellen Gainsford has the story. This pristine beach in Malaysia is about to get much busier. From Thursday, fully vaccinated domestic travellers will be allowed to visit Langkawi, a tourism hotspot. There's hopes that as the country's vaccination campaign continues, it will be able to open up further to foreign visitors. Kita hanya mensasarkan uh, kedatangan pengunjung adalah sebanyak uh, 200 uh, ribu untuk bulan uh, di, uh, Disember nanti. Jadi uh, kita masih uh, tidak mahu uh, kesesakan ataupun uh, ber berlaku walaupun kita perlukan. Tourism plays a huge role in Malaysia's economy, accounting for 13.3% of GDP in 2019 before the pandemic. Other countries in the region, including Vietnam and Indonesia, are also looking at tourism bubbles for travellers. Local business owners on Bali are cautiously optimistic that things are about to pick up. Kita sudah mulai uh, melakukan perjalanan melalui darat maupun transportasi udara. Jadi itu terlihat dari uh, pantai Kuta yang sudah mulai ada pengunjung dan di Grand Enakuta sudah mulai ada peningkatan okupansi. Mereka juga merespon positif dengan standarisasi yang ditetapkan oleh Grand Enakuta. Meanwhile, Thailand is one step ahead, having reopened the island of Phuket to foreign travelers in July in a scheme it dubbed the Phuket Sandbox. The country lost around $50 billion in revenue when visitor numbers plunged at the start of the pandemic. Just one of the many countries trying to get their tourism industry back on its feet. I'm sure we'll see similar efforts from other countries in Southeast Asia as well. I'm sure we will. Stephen, thanks very much, Stephen, with business.